Welcome to Football Manager 2019 tutorial. The purpose of this tutorial is to teach beginners and lazy people just like myself how to play this game. Now this is, even if you're experienced um, football manager player, you might take a few interesting uh, things out of this video, but the, the main uh, audience of this video is beginners that don't want to micromanage every single aspect of the, of the game. That they are lazy, just like me. Or they are busy, also just like me. So I just want to get my football manager fix, you know. I want some death in my game. I don't want it to be shallow game, but I also don't want to micromanage every single thing. So. If this is you as well, if you, these words resonate with you, this is the video for you. Now, why am I at this screen? Let's start with step one. What do you want to actually do in this game? And the first step is when you're actually creating a new game, a new save game, you have this question here on this screen. Are you experienced? Yes or no? Even if you are not, click yes, because then you will be able to personalize this. Now what I want to do is to go to each of these tabs and and basically select what I want to uh, manage. So I don't care about the head of youth department or scout, I do care about the assistant manager because as we will see on the next uh, topics, I delegate everything to him or her. So it's very important that you get this right. Everything else. I don't feel like it influences that much. I'm not a low league manager player, but even if I was, I don't think this changes too much. Unless again, you want to micromanage and then obviously it makes sense. But if you're like me, lazy, busy, you just want to get your football manager fixed, but you also don't want to make it uh, so uh, shallow that you don't get any joy out of it, then this is the video for you. Okay. So assistant manager, tip number one, just tick this one because you will need him. In terms of transfers, first team, of course. Outgoing as well. You should manage this because the AI is it sucks at this. Okay, you should take ownership of this. Um, accept offering because if you already put these players in transfer alone, uh, I what I normally do is delegate it to my um, football director, and he handles this. So I just tick this one. Contracts as well. For the youth team, I tend to handle the new signing uh, contract contract negotiations because I find that AI um, doesn't doesn't do this properly. Transfer. I don't handle this, but I do finalize the incoming offers as well, and the contract renewals. I leave it to to the youth uh, staff. In terms of training. I delegate everything to assistant manager and this is one of the reasons why it's so important to get a good assistant manager. And the only thing I do is on the details. So this is a very summarized screen of what type of responsibilities you will have. And as you can see, it's mostly picking up the assistant manager and handling the transfers. Those are the main things you really need to manage in this game. Everything else I think it's, it's optional. In terms of management and matches, sorry, here I don't handle team talks, but I do handle opposition instructions. Although I ignore this completely, but I don't want the AI of the game to handle this. I find that, that it, it makes more mistakes than what it actually helps me. Media, I don't care. And this, I also don't care. So I just to summarize, I don't do this, the handle opposition instructions because AI messes it up. I only care about hiring the assistant manager and I handle the transfers and I don't care about training because I will hire an excellent assistant manager which will also hire the other people. Now if you're starting a new game you'll find this screen. What is this? It's basically is your statistics and this will influence the attributes you are given as a manager in the game. So these statistics influence training 
that's what they do. So if you want to have high training performance in certain areas and you don't care so much about the others, you can tweak these things. And this is also based on the team I'm managing. So I'm starting this save with Flamengo from Brazil. I'm not Brazilian, but uh, I'm, I, I want to start a save with uh, Flamengo. I'll explain it on the next Football Manager series in my channel, why I'm picking Flamengo. But anyway, the point is, if you tick these boxes, then it will automatically populate this for you and you can tweak this up or down or whatever, so you have points. Uh, I tend to leave this like this, average in everything. Um, if after you get a bit more experienced, you think this at attribute is more important than the other, then you just do it. But uh, I find that for this level of club, so this is like top world clubs, um, these statistics are, are fine. And in the end, it's the assistant manager that's going to really make a difference. So when you start a new game, you get presented with a bunch of messages. Um, I'm going to assume you won't have too much trouble uh, getting uh, familiar with the interface, although I will uh, quickly give you a quick um, intro about the, the main things you should check when you start a new game. So the first thing is read the messages. So this one is um, the welcome message. And I tend to attend all the meetings because this also gives me an opportunity to set up some of, of the interaction I'll have in the future with my staff. So this is, uh, you can choose whatever you want. This is about philosophies I don't want, but if you do want, this is the time that you want to tweak. Uh, I don't feel anything is required. Press conference, I don't care. And now I say thanks and I go to my assistant manager. I don't know who this guy is. It's my first time managing this team. So I'm also putting in the position where I'm a beginner in terms of which team is this and what, what does this team need and how can I manage it. And um, I do want them to send me reports. I want them to send me a summary regarding the squad and I want to meet my staff. Yeah, so you get, get all the information you can at the beginning, I definitely recommend that. And then if when you reach this screen where he asks for a bunch of other stuff, you say, no, nah, thanks, I'll find you if I need you. And just click exit, exit, done. So this basically um, is setting up the game um, to tell you some more information that uh, will be useful for you to understand your squad and your club. One of the messages you're going to get in the new club is the tactics. I tend to skip this because I already have my own tactic. This video is not about tactics. I will briefly discuss why I chose the tactic I have, but what you should do is as you play the game, you create your own tactic, or if you Google, there's a plenty of people that have their own tactics and, uh, and uh, you can just download one and use it yourself. And there's a lot of reasons why you should select one tactic over the other. Um, but it's not the purpose of this video, although I will briefly talk about it. Similar stuff for training, I just skip. And now the responsibilities. Now, you should always come here and click change staff responsibilities. Although when you set up the game, you already defined some of these, you have much more here. So what I like to do because I'm lazy and I'm busy, I just want to play the game with as minimum micromanagement as possible and focus on what I prefer to focus on football manager, which is to actually manage the players and the tactics. It's my two of my favorite aspects. I don't care so much about the training or anything else. So what I do is whoever is available manages everything except what you'll see. So this is all good. Yes, 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 and let's finalize, finalize, yeah, so, yeah, this is all good, the same, so this is based on that um, intro section, the settings we defined there, it's fine, it's fine, this I don't care, this I don't care. So 
So I delegate the scouting for the um, chief scout. I'll go into scouting a little bit later. I don't care about the scout meetings. And now, first team. So tactical briefings now, everything to assistant manager. Yeah, that's the only thing I want to manage, everything else is as is. Reserves, I don't care about them. Under 20s, I don't care. Yeah, and here. So the personal assistant will automatically um, populate some of the tasks related to transfers and loans. And um, when I scout a player, this is something I like to change. I would like to shortlist it for at least three months. And I want to put the default of until full knowledge. So if you're completely new to this, when you scout a player, you can right click on it and send scout and this will automatically uh, comply with the settings you put here. So it will add that player you want to scout for three months to your shortlist so you get news and updates about him and he, your scouts will be with him until he, it populates all the attributes of the player so you know it completely or like it says here, full knowledge. When I offer players to either club, I like to put uh, the, the cost the selling price, I should say, 100% of its value. And I also put it as not needed. The loans, I don't care so much. And that's it, guys. So, as you can see, I delegate a lot of things, except the assistant manager and transfers, mostly, and uh, everything else my staff handles. So it's very important to pick your assistant manager and hopefully here also you should have a good director of football because it will he will hire everything else everybody else in the initial dialogue when you started the game um, there were a few questions you had to to answer and one of them is if you wanted some uh, reports about the, the contract and this is what you would get okay it's important that you ask for this or if you've done for some reason check it I'm actually not sure if this uh, will appear anyway um, because I always do the same stuff when I start the game so I don't know if I don't choose the same options if this won't appear just pay attention to it when you're in those dialogues when you start the game if you recall in the beginning when you have the induction make sure that you you select the reports so the assistant manager can send you the reports so here then I will need to manage this and see which um, contracts I want to renew, probably all of them because three stars and this one is an uh, interesting potential well not that interesting actually anyway when in doubt my tip is renew the contract so now that we set up our basics in terms of responsibilities of staff which is the thing I like to to begin with, the next thing is to check on the tactics. So because I already have a tactic, I scroll down on this screen and I, I click load tactic. And this is what I do. I select this one, which is my favorite tactic. So I just load it, boom, it's done. It's that simple. If you want manager, um, football manager has a, a nice kind of wizard um, way of creating tactics which is based on the screen the previous screen you saw and um, you can just go nuts so this tactic I have is mine and I it, it took it took a few saves <laughs> several seasons until I got the tactic right for my style um, so you just have to find a tactic that suits you as well okay after you see the tactics what I recommend is that you check your squad Now it might be worthy to change your tactic depending on the squad, especially if you are not going to buy players on the first transfer window, which is how I normally start. I normally 
I very rarely buy players on the, on the first test for Windows just because it makes the game a bit more realistic to me. Because I want to imagine myself in that club, in those conditions, with those players when it starts. And then later I, I, I do my own thing, if it makes sense. So I like to start with the default players and then I see where the game takes me. So if this suits you as well, um, the next step is just check on the players you have um, so you can then customize your tactics if you need. I find it more often than not I don't. What I do is, for example, in my tactic I don't have uh, the, the wingers, I have inverted midfielders or inverted wingers, sorry. So I don't have those traditional wingers that, that um, stay a bit higher up the pitch. So what I do is, for example, this guy, if I want this guy to be a, a inside winger, I select this, I go to development and training and then I change his role to inverted winger support. And then because I delegated this to my assistant, it asks me, do you want to change this? I only select the yes, but only for the next month. So for the next month, these things will be applicable. And then in a month time, uh, or more, depending, I, I don't I follow this by the, you know, by the book, but whenever I remember, I come here and I see the progress. If this player is progressing well, I come here and I do this again. If he isn't, then I give up and I just have to find another solution. But I tend to not give up. I tend to insist because even if he is not perfectly suited for this role, uh, he still improves. So that's, um, that's something I don't mind really. So looking at this tactic, for example, if you're a beginner, you'll see I have three right backs and only one uh, full back, uh, left, so three uh, right defenders and only one left. So let's take a look at how many positions I can play. So this one can play left and right, perfect, because what I like to have, and that's why I normally select this screen, is I want to know their best positions. This is my default screen. I always have this screen. If you click here, you can choose whichever screen fits you. The most common screens is a report or selection info. Those are the most used. I prefer the reports because I want to know the, their best positions. And that helps me understand where my, my team is lacking or not um, players in certain positions. And also gives me the ability and potential. So I know exactly which plays are the best or not for each position. And um, if you remember, this guy can play right or left. So perfect. I like to have two players per position. So I, I like to have two right backs, two left backs and so on. Four central defenders because there's two per position. I have two defenders and so on. And then you use the training as we did previously, to personalize their actual positions on the pitch. So after everything is settled, so I created my tactics, I delegated the responsibilities and I've uh, checked my squad, then I'll go to scouting to understand what I can do to bridge that gap. As I said previously, on the first transfer window, I don't buy players, it's very rare I do, but I do set up scouting for the following transfer window so then I can reinforce the team if I need, which normally everybody does. Okay. So if you're not familiar with this screen, the most important thing is the ability and the potential ability and the overall score. I very rarely buy players with less than, less than 70 and that also depends on the actual um, guy that, that um, scouted the player. For example, this one has very high statistics, 15 and 19, so this, uh, this recommendation is very trustworthy. And what I normally do is just keep scouting. If it's a good player, I keep scouting. If not, I cancel. So I'm just going to click through this. Keep scouting, keep scouting. These are all great players, by the way. Keep scouting, and that's it. Now, if you notice here, you have multiple tabs. What I normally like to do is to change the general uh, scouting focus 
for young. And the reason why I do this is, although I play with big teams, I don't play with Real Madrid or Manchester or whatever. I don't play, I play teams in the major divisions, but they are not like filthy wealthy. And even if they were, even if I was grabbing a Man United and a Real Madrid, I would still go for the young players because, not just because they are cheap, in these clubs doesn't really matter, but because I like to have a young team. I like to build my own team and, and kind of tailor the players to my playing style and that's why I go for the young players the other let's say players uh, I say peak players or experienced players will still pop up in the um, scouting reports but it will focus primarily on this which is what I want and if you have any um, positions uh, on your team that you're lacking you just come here to the short term new short term focus select what you want and then click set focus and that's that simple Another thing to bear in mind is the budget. So before you select the budget, you should go to the players tab and see the packages. There are two packages, the senior package and the youth package. As you can see, um, we don't have the best package. I want the best package. I want the world package. And this will affect your budget. So you need to keep your eyes on it. In this case, it stay the same for whatever reason but just keep your eye on it otherwise one of these things will will stop working so you either stop uh, scouting seniors or juniors or youth okay in this screen what i normally like to do so these are all the scouted players or all the players found sorry i uh, sort this table by recommended there we go this is the most recommended player And as you can see here, this is the percentage of uh, knowledge level, and this one is 80%. So you typically want to wait for this to be 100%, unless someone's going to steal the player for you, uh, from you, and then it's it's a decision you need to make. You're going to risk it and maybe get a crappy player, or you're going to potentially lose it if it's a good player. So this is this is. Um, something you need to pay attention and make sure that your scouts uh, have 100% knowledge level and if you recall when I was setting up the responsibilities there was a um, assistant personal assistant tab that when you oh sorry this is being scouted it's not a good example for example this guy if you click get scout report those settings on the responsibilities tab will apply here in this case if I click get scout report I put the settings to add the player to the shortlist and to scout that player until a knowledge level is 100%. So it's, it's very important. Also, you should check the finances. As you see, I'm, in, I'm, I'm the manager of Flamengo, big club, one of the biggest in the world. And, um, and look how much money they have. <laughs> it's not a lot to buy good players although I'm in South America so I'm, I'm hoping this is my first time by the way I'm managing uh, uh, a team in South America but this is not a lot of money so I'm hoping it's cheaper players here uh, in South America should be cheaper but you never know so this is very small transfer budget and rich budget and there you go guys this is how you start a football manager save um, if you're lazy like me I don't need although there's a lot of information in this screen as you can see you rarely need to go to all these things the tabs I normally use is the tactics staff if I need to understand what's going on particularly the responsibilities tab and I go to scouting to make sure that all the scouting things I need are, are there and that's basically it scout squad squad i should say <laughs> tactics stuff and scouting these are the main tabs obviously with time you will eventually explore all of them but these are the main ones that you should focus especially if you're a beginner and then you just click continue thanks for watching please leave a like if you enjoyed this video subscribe if you are interested in seeing more stuff like this uh, my channel is uh, brand new 
but um, I will be uploading a lot of videos in the, in the future and um, the content will grow and grow hopefully you enjoy it once again thanks for watching and I'll see you next time bye